Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is the third part of chapter 4, which is a supplement for part 2. At the end of this part, you are going to be able to establish the differential equation which governs the simple harmonic motion of a horizontal elastic pendulum using methods in physics. Before we start, remember what we have taken in the previous videos. When we ask about the nature of motion, the answer could be simple harmonic motion, uniform rectilinear motion, uniformly accelerated rectilinear motion, etc. So simple harmonic motion is an answer of the question about the nature of motion. Also when we ask about the nature of oscillation, the answer is either free undamped mechanical oscillation, free damped mechanical oscillation, driven oscillation, or forced oscillation. Here we are talking about free undamped mechanical oscillation. Remember we have taken before about simple harmonic motion and we said that it is defined if the differential equation is of the form x double prime plus omega zero squared x equals to zero and x equals to a cosine omega zero t plus phi or a sine omega zero t plus phi. For a free undamped mechanical oscillation, we said that mechanical energy is conserved and there is no non-conservative forces. To study the characteristics of free undamped mechanical oscillation in physics, we consider a horizontal elastic pendulum formed of a solid of mass M and a spring of stiffness K of negligible mass and non-joint turns. The solid is attached to one end of the spring and whose other end is attached to a fixed support. X prime or X is a horizontal axis positively oriented to the right. When the spring is neither elongated nor compressed, the abscessa of G is X equals to zero, which is called the equilibrium position. To start the study of the oscillation, the solid is moved a distance X equals to A and then released. The maximum displacement from equilibrium point is called amplitude. The oscillator then is in simple harmonic motion. Actually, we have two methods to find the differential equation. Method 1. Consider the following horizontal elastic pendulum where the horizontal plane passing through the center of mass G is taken as reference of gravitational potential energy. Then the height of G is zero and X is the elongation of the spring at an instant T. We are going to benefit from the conservation of the mechanical energy. So one must write the expression of the mechanical energy at any time when the abscessa x and the velocity v are not zero. Avoid the two extreme positions and the equilibrium position in your study. Then the mechanical energy is the kinetic plus gravitational potential energy plus the elastic potential energy. But we have said that the gravitational potential energy is zero, then the mechanical energy is written as half m v squared plus half k x squared. As the oscillations are made without any non-conservative forces, then the mechanical energy of the system is conserved. Do you have any idea how this may help us to find the differential equation? I will give you a hint. We need to make derivative to get to the differential equation. So, it's right. We can make derivative for the mechanical energy and its expression, which will be equal to zero since mechanical energy is constant. Then, to make derivative, we should remember some rules of derivatives, especially the derivative of x squared, which is 2xv, and that of v, which is 2va, since x and v are functions of time. Following the rules, we find that this equation becomes 0 equals to half m 2v x double prime plus half k 
2x v. Take v common, then we have 0 equals to v into mx double prime plus kx. This means in math that v equals to 0 or mx double prime plus kx equals to 0 at any time. And v equals to 0 at any time means that there is no motion at all. And that is not the case that we studied. So the one solution of this equation is mx double prime plus kx equals to 0. This equation then can be written as x double prime plus k over mx equals to 0. This differential equation is of second order and of the form x double prime plus omega 0 squared x equals to 0. Where by comparison, it shows that omega 0 squared equals to k over m. This method should be studied very well. What is the other method? It is Newton's second law. This law deals with the study of the effect of the force on the system. So we should first define the system. Consider the same oscillator defined before. The system to be studied is solid M. What are the forces acting on it? Its weight, the normal reaction of support, and the tension of the spring. The tension of the spring T vector is always of an expression T vector equals to minus kx i vector. And its algebraic value is T equals to minus kx since it is a restoring force. It is opposite to the displacement of the spring. Then, according to Newton's second law, the sum of forces external acting on the solid equals to ma vector. Then, it is written as mg vector plus n vector plus t vector equals to ma vector. By projecting along x prime or x, we can get to the answer kx plus mx double prime equals to 0. Then x double prime plus k over mx equals to 0. And this is also the second order differential equation. Please pause the video and repeat the two methods by yourselves on your copybook. Now, what is the physical meaning of each factor of the time equation? Take x equals to a sine omega 0 t plus phi. X is the abscessa of G, the center of mass. The absolute value of A is XM, the maximum displacement, which is all the time positive. Omega 0, which is radical K over M, and it's all the time positive, it is the proper angular frequency. Phi, it is the phase at T equals to 0. And finally, Omega 0 T plus Phi is the phase at an instant t. What is the unit? The unit of x is m meter. The amplitude also it's meter. Omega 0 is radians per second phi and omega 0 t plus phi in radians. It's important to know that x lies between minus xm and xm. x a and xm have the same unit. The amplitude depends on x0 and v0. Besides, omega0 depends only on the characteristics m and k of the oscillator, while finally, phi depends on x0 and v0, the initial values. In addition to their meanings, we should understand more how they affect the motion. So, suppose we have a time equation like x equals to 1 times sine 2 pi t. The amplitude is 1 centimeter. Omega 0 is 2 pi radians per second. And following the expression t0 equals to 2 pi over omega 0, the period is 1 second. The phase here is just 0. What is the graph of this equation? Okay. It is a sinusoidal one. We can see that it has a constant amplitude, which is 1, as we said. 
and it starts from zero as phase is zero at t equals to zero. Its period is only one second. If x equals to 1.5 sine 2 pi t, let's find its characteristics. The amplitude then is 1.5 centimeters. Omega zero is 2 pi. Now period is one second. It's still one second. And the phase is also zero. So the only factor that is varied is its amplitude. Mm -hmm. It shows us that its amplitude increased by half but all other characteristics are just the same what if x equals to one sine pi t the amplitude here is one centimeter as the origin one omega zero is pi period is two seconds the phase is still zero so what is the difference between them we can find that in this case the amplitude is still the same, the initial value is still the same, but instead of having period one second, it's two seconds, and here the period on the graph becomes wider. Since the period is doubled while the angular frequency becomes half of it. Remember that what changes the angular frequency is the change in the stiffness or the mass since omega zero equals to radical k over m. Finally, consider the expression x equals to one sine two pi t plus pi over four. Here, what do you think? What about the amplitude? Yes, it's one centimeter. What about the angular frequency? Okay, it's two pi radians per second. So, the period is one second. Now, what is the phase at t equals to zero? It is pi over four. Let's draw it. It seems that the oscillation leads the first one by pi over four. We have a little shift in the graph, and it seems that phi affects in the initial start of the oscillation. The time equation then for simple harmonic motion can be written as x equals to x m sine omega zero t plus phi, where its characteristics to be studied by heart, expressions and names as proper angular frequency omega zero is radical k over m. Proper period t zero is two pi over omega zero, which is two pi radical m over k. Proper frequency, which is 1 over the proper period, and then it is 1 over 2 pi radical k over m, the amplitude xm, and note that omega 0, f0, zero, and t0 zero are called oscillator characteristics since they depend only on the characteristics k and m of the oscillator. After defining the time equation, we can now define the velocity and acceleration time equations by the derivative of x and the derivative of v or the second derivative of x. The amplitude of x is xm, that of v is xm omega zero, and that of the acceleration is omega zero squared xm. It is always positive. Then v can be written as v maximum sine omega zero t plus phi plus pi over two since cosine alpha equals to sine alpha plus pi over two the acceleration a equals to minus omega zero squared x and can be written as a maximum sine omega zero t plus phi plus pi since minus sine alpha equals to sine alpha plus pi and this is used if i want to convert from cosine to sine and vice versa at last we have all these ideas that mentioned before and we add to it the proper angular frequency and the proper period this is the end of part three 
Study well and thanks for watching.